You're all very welcome to the first in our short series of videos on financial wellbeing. My name is Ailish Gorman. I'm a financial wellbeing coach with Bank of Ireland based in the West. I'm delighted to be chatting with Shane Quinlan today. Shane joined the bank in a Bank of Ireland in 2015, having held a number of senior roles in financial services, both here and across Europe. Shane was appointed head of financial wellbeing in 2019 when the program, when the program launched. So Shane, as mentioned, the program launched just over a year ago. Can you begin with giving us an overview of what financial wellbeing is and the purpose of the program? Thanks, Eilish, for that uh, very great introduction. Uh, yeah, delighted to. Um, I, th I think if we, if we consider physical wellbeing and mental wellbeing are obviously two key elements of overall wellbeing that are very well understood. Um, I suppose in recent years, the concept of financial wellbeing and improving your overall financial health has become a lot more established. Um, financial well-being can mean different things to different people. I think um, at its most simplest, it's, it's, it's a person's ability to competently manage their money and plan for the future. I suppose when we consider financial well-being, uh, we look at four specific areas within that. How people save, how they spend, how they borrow and how they, how they plan. And um, in terms of the purpose, we would have undertaken uh, research back in 2018 to assess the financial well-being of the Irish nation. And I suppose some of, the, uh, some of the findings that came out of that survey were, were quite alarming. Um, just to give you a, a bit of a sense, over a third of, of respondents in the survey uh, said they were very worried about their personal finances. Over a half said that they, uh, they had no pension pl in place. Uh, and one in four um, said that they would last less than a month without having to borrow if they lost their main source of income, which is something that's uh, really relevant, I think, in, in, in the current situation. Um, I suppose before that, and, and in recent years, there's been a lot of international studies that have looked at Ireland's level of financial literacy as well. So that's basically um, how, how good at understanding uh, our finances and managing our finances. And um, I suppose we, we, like we are behind European countries, such as the UK, uh, Germany and, and, and some of our, our, our countries in, in the Nordics on that. So I suppose if you consider Bank of Ireland's purpose, which is to enable our customers, our colleagues and our communities to thrive, one way to do this is to help them to, to make better financial decisions for themselves, uh, for their family and, and, and for their business. What type of initiatives have the Bank of Ireland um, delivered through the Financial Wellbeing Programme? Yeah, we're, we're just over a year in the programme now and I suppose the, the three specific, specific areas that we have focused on um, the first is around financial education and um, the second area is around financial well-being tools that we can provide to our, our customers and the third area is, is on the products and services that we provide as a bank. Um, just to take financial education at the start, uh, we, we have delivered a number of literacy programs um, across a number of our, of our customer groups. So, for example, we have a financial well-being uh, coach team, which is which is based uh, all, all over the country, and they do, do a lot of engagement on behalf of the program on financial well-being and delivering literacy uh, programs into into various customer segments, such as into primary and secondary schools, um, to third-level students on campus, to some of our older customers, uh, small business customers, uh, to employees of some of our corporate customers, and various community groups. Um, in terms of digital tools, um, you know, we're rolling out new tools to help our customers manage their day-to-day -day finances, but also help them plan better for the future. So if you go to our website, you can see uh, the online financial health check, which will give you a, an overall assessment of your own financial health. Um, we delivered a new digital investment tool for our customers at the back end of 2019, which has been very well received. And our new mobile app is launching over the next couple of months. So there's a range of new tools, uh, digital tools that we're rolling out to help our customers manage their finances. And I suppose in that third area around products and services uh, to help our customers ma uh, improve their financial well-being, I think one, one tangible example of what we've delivered in the last year is we opened a new vulnerable customer unit um, in 2019 to provide banking support to, to customers in, in particular vulnerable circumstances. So customers with disabilities, um, it could be age-related, um, you know, vulnerability, customers suffering financial abuse or suffering with addiction. So, um, you know, across those three areas of, of education, new, new digital tools and, and, and the products and services that we provide has been our focus in the first year of the program. Wow, that's a vast range of supports for our customers and communities. Um, we see and hear a lot about well-being, especially at the moment, the importance of maintaining good physical and mental health with that in mind, how does financial well-being impact one's overall financial well-being? Yeah, I mentioned at the start, Eilish, that you know, mental well-being and, and physical well-being is quite well understood. Um, you know, I, I think all three elements, when you put in financial well-being on that, 
uh, the strong linkages, uh, I think, across all three. You know, financial stress can have, a, uh, as we know, can have a significant the impact on our, on our mental and our, and our physical well-being. I think two of the most common effects of financial stress are, are obviously anxiety and depression. There's been a lot of research in this area, particularly in the US. Um, you know, some of the research that, that, that we've seen there show that people that are under consistent or, or constant financial stress tend to experience, uh, you know, increase in, in, in a number of health issues, whether that's, you know, migraine, um, you know, ulcers, uh, depression, um, or, or potentially, you know, a, a lack of sleep. I suppose this reinforces the importance of, of being on top of your finances, um, you know, improving your ability where possible to manage your money and then have a plan for the future. Um, and I suppose it's no different, you know, you can improve your financial well-being in the same way you improve your physical health or your fitness. It's true awareness, it's true setting goals and accessing whatever supports are available. Yeah, that's really important, and especially at the moment um, with the current COVID-19 pandemic. And it has presented many challenges for families across Ireland. Um, how is Bank of Ireland uh, supporting the financial well-being of their customers during this time? Yeah, I think, Ailish, like the rest of the world, um, obviously the bank is dealing with, with, with the challenges of COVID-19 um, in, in, the, in the last two months. Uh, we've rolled out a, a various number of customer supports um, you know, I suppose if you, if you look what's happening in the country, a lot of businesses have closed uh, in the last couple of months. There's a lot of uh, people now out of work uh, and have experienced a, 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 you know, an income shock. Um, so there's a couple of areas that we've looked at. I suppose the first thing that we, we've done really is provide a number of financial reliefs for our customers, whether in, but that's in the form of, you know, loan payment breaks for personal customers, for business customers, making sure that small business customers get access to working capital uh, during this challenging time. You know, we've waived certain fees around, around contactless um, and we fast track payments to um, SME providers to Bank of Ireland as well. So there's a number of, kind of financial reliefs that we've, we've, uh, we've rolled out in support of our customers. The secondary we looked at then is new services for our co older customers and vulnerable customers, um, you know, such as dedicated branch hours, um, dedicated phone lines for, for senior customers. Um, you know, we've also rolled out a number of new services to help um, older customers and vulnerable customers do their banking, being cocooning and self-isolating, and they've been very well received. I suppose the third area then, looking from a community perspective, we've donated one million in emergency funding to communities around the country. So between the financial reliefs, the, the new services for, for, for older and, and vulnerable customers, and then the emergency fund, um, we certainly feel that we, we've, uh, we've been there for the customer in the last two months. Yeah, and in a recent survey um, conducted by the bank in, within this theme of, of COVID behaviours, there were a number of findings. Um, can you point to anything in particular that stood out for you in that survey? Yeah, that, that, the survey you referred to, Ailish, is, is a survey we've done with uh, about 400 customers looking at how their habits um, are changing during COVID-19. There were some very interesting insights into how people are adapting uh, to, to the new environment. I suppose not surprising, we're seeing customers cancelling and deferring uh, planned purchases and subscriptions that they would have had kind of pre-COVID. Um, we're, we're obviously seeing the, the move away from cash uh, towards uh, contactless cards. We've actually seen less usage of credit cards as well um, during, during the emergency. I suppose the key in insight for me really is that consumers are starting to move away now from being primarily concerned about their, their personal health, which obviously would have been the, the, the initial concerns in, 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 the, uh, in the first couple of months. To become an increasingly more concerned about financial matters, which I think is understandable in, in the current environment. I think that the kind of key concerns there are, you know, you know that reduction in income that people have experienced, and the fact that people have 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 you know et into some of their savings buffers that they would have built up, uh, COVID, but also that that um, ability to afford day to day living expenses, considering the uh, financial shock that they've experienced. Are there any shifts in your own financial well-being um, as a result of the programme and being involved in it? Uh, absolutely. Um, I certainly feel my financial well-being has, has benefited from being involved in the programme and, and specifically, I suppose, getting access to, to the financial well-being advice um, that I've seen in, in, in the first year of the programme. I think the budget planner is an excellent tool uh, in terms of kind of managing day-to-day -day expenses. Um, and, and I've taken the, the online financial health check. I, take, I tend to take it every couple of months just to make sure that I'm, I'm heading in the right direction with my, uh, with my financial well-being. I suppose two specific areas that I have looked at, um, Ailish, is in relation to my pension. So paying a bit more, more attention to my, my pension, considering a uh, stage of life and, and making sure that I'm making the right contributions um, that would be required for, for my retirement. 
development. Um, I suppose the other area is I've got three young kids uh, who, fingers crossed, will be, will be going to college at some stage in the future. So um, just looking at starting to make a bit more uh, provision for their education. Um, so very much kind of future planning. That's good. That's great. It's good that you got the benefit of it from your from the program. Um, so that's that's it for our video. Um, I suppose it all sounds like there's lots more happening. So thanks to Shane for joining us today, and make sure that you check out the videos in the coming weeks. Mm -hmm.